As we push deeper into September, the elk continue to get more and more aggressive. I'm Jason Phelps, and with me on this hunt is a good buddy of mine, Charlie Smith. This week we were heading deep into the Umatilla National Forest to try and fill my tag on an Oregon bull. He's an experienced hunter and a great caller, and I'm excited to get to hunt with him again. The bull should be responsive, so if we play our cards right, this should be a very action-packed week. Oh, oh, oh. First morning in Oregon, heading into an area we've been looking at and don't know what to expect. Hopefully, lots of bugles. I have a pretty good feeling about this ridge. It's a good long ridge. It really, looks really oaky, so just like normal, first time to an area, we're gonna stay high. We're gonna bugle off each side of the ridge and just try to locate some oak to go after. Get around that corner. It's the first morning and our mission is just to pinpoint some elk. We're gonna take it slow, working down a ridge, throwing out location bugles off of both sides to see if we get a response. We will then adjust our plan based on the responses we get or the sign that we see. I think we uh, kick ass back to camp. Go to a different spot. Probably. Go check some more spots out, look for good sign. Yeah, we need a sign before we can find location bugles, I think. Put those puzzle pieces together. Yeah. It's midday. About noon, we're gonna hike in on this road system in here two or three miles and look around, look for fresh shine, try and figure out where they're at. Wind in here is terrible. It's swirling. It's went 180 degrees since we've been standing here. Looks good in here. Yeah, really good. Our goal early in the hunt is just to cover a lot of ground. We want to listen for bugles, look for sign, and just try to figure out where the elk are at. This will leave us with a very good idea of where to, or not to, chase elk further on in this hunt. I'm thinking we just stay here, maybe gather some information, kind of. I mean, if something's close, we can go hunt it, but kind of call the hunt off for the night, stay high, and see if that affects tomorrow's hunt, but kind of took ourselves out of the game. From what I'm seeing, a lot of good elk sign in those big rubs. Got to yep. be a nice bull in here. Somewhere, we just have to figure out where he's at. What's well, a good sign? Right off the bat, we park the truck, get out, and it's got a bull bugler right below us. Now we just have to figure out how we're gonna approach this bull with the wind going downhill, but we do have some running water down here below us. So it's gonna keep that wind going down, down the drainage. And he's across the drainage, so we will have to kind of either play him like straight on or slightly down the creek from him. You couldn't ask for a better scenario. First light, we just got out of the truck and we already have a bull bugling down across the drainage. From our position though, the wind isn't very good. So we're gonna have to get below this bull, which will require us to go down the drainage and come back up on him. There, right there. 
see him? He stopped there about 12 yards. That was perfect. He just sitting there with his nose up. Just I don't, I don't know how it would have ever got. I could have killed him when he left. That would have been the only way. Was he pretty much straight on? or just Yeah. His neck? Well, he turned a lot. I mean, I, I just could never got drowned. I heard of, what, three or four different bulls beagling to our right. And then this guy's beagled a couple times ahead of us. I want to try and go. Yeah, I think we go try this one because the wind's good. And then we'll circle under these. Maybe try to make a play on the other group after this. Charlie's gonna stay back and call while I move forward within bow range of where we think this bull will show himself. The hope is that he can pull this bull past my location, giving me a very close shot. I couldn't have shot there. I could have shot him the second time. It would have been a frontal at 20, less than 20 yards when he came back the second time. Before he came in though, I thought the whole herd busted. I'm like, what just happened? Like, he pushed his cows back then he... Yeah, and then like within three seconds, he was right on top of me. I'm like, well, that didn't give me much time. That, that was a pretty good bull. I mean, yeah. perfect setup. Did exactly what I thought he was gonna do. Right to the ridge top. When you have these elevation changes, you know he was going to be able to get there and see everything down here. So we knew he was going to stop there. That's why we set you back 40 or 50 yards and we tried to get tight to that. But he, just like they always do, they get their eyes above it and then they stop. We needed him to take about one or two more steps. But what, well, we still have a couple bulls beagling down here. Him, him, him. We'll go start chasing, get our wind right, get down below him, and then we'll go check some of these other bulls. That was a close one. But at this point, we don't feel our time will be best spent chasing after him as he knows something's up and he's now unresponsive to our calls. So our best plan of action is to chase another bull we heard early in the morning. We just need to relocate him. winds right at our backs but now with the with them being more off this edge straight away it's a very very tough wind play and, and it, i don't think we want to mess them up in here not if we want to hunt them in the morning i think we just leave them alone and maybe hunt our way back towards the truck from here sucks to leave a bugling bull but i mean the odds just aren't playing out in our favor right here
There's a bowl. There's a big bowl. Right here, Charlie. There's a little one down low and the big one's up top. With the elk slowly feeding away from the open burn towards the timber, we decide to make our move. The train here will allow us to approach without being detected. With the wind making it tough to approach, our only play is to head straight at the bowl and hope that the wind doesn't change in the process. After Charlie's beagle, I could see the bull start to head our way, but another elk that we didn't know was there, about 200 yards to our left, winded us. That elk then ran through the middle of the herd, taking the rest of the herd with him. We can either cross over this draw and hunt the opposite side of this ridge, or we can walk back the way we came in. It's getting about prime time. We'll head that way, I think. The road system will connect into the same one further down that we were on, so. This is one of those times during a hunt where we decide our odds of success are better if we go find new elk to hunt. These elk are spooked and it's almost impossible to call elk in after they've winded you. We're gonna make the most of it though and hunt our way back to the truck. Looks like on Onyx, the way those bulls went, there's another road that maybe leads to it. So this takes us to the truck anyways. We might as well go up there and give it a Looks shot. Looks like it makes a nice little loop kind of where we went the yeah. other day. At least nothing else will lay eyes on that bull so we know what we're chasing.
We'll get out of here without winding these guys in case we want to come back at them. It was worth the last 30 minute ditch, you know, last ditch effort that we were just going to walk to the truck. So got into action and had a chance at least. Leaving the bull and his cows alone last night without pressuring them should guarantee they won't be far this morning. So we spent most of the morning getting to right here and then all these dang bulls are down here below us. We've sat here for probably a little over an hour. Now we've got the wind coming up so we can now make a stock down. So my approach here is going to be like let him hear us walking through the brush in the woods, not make any calls. We're just gonna go no calls, but then hopefully, you know, us walking through the woods will be in, you know, enough noise that he thinks there's a, a bull coming in. So we're gonna try that today. Three cow calls would be come down there, but I imagine if we don't find any success, we're just gonna climb back out. Okay. We had some satellites moving in and that herd bull was kind of getting upset. So we figured probably be a good time to try and sneak in on him. He made it on down to about where we thought the cows were, but it sounded like the herd bull moved down the hill. At the same time, another satellite or two was moving up. I'm not sure exactly what's going on right now. I see Jason had moved over the hill, but maybe they get a good look at the bull at least or get some, get some good action. Every decision I make during a hunt has a risk associated with it. In this instance, I expected the cows and calves to continue with the bugling bull instead of bedding down at the edge of the burn. I made the wrong decision here, but with these elk knowing something's up, we need to push on to a new location. Yeah, we got over that first little rise and a cow-calf, cow-calf popped out of their beds and ran towards them. Oh. But there was, he, I'm he, gonna, even if everything was perfect, 12 to 14 foot tall stacked together. I couldn't have shot more in the yard okay. at any point down there. That's why they were there. Yep. Cause that, so that satellite, as you guys started in, that satellite had like got up to the edge and that herd bull moved down, I think, away from the cows. All I know is I'm going to find somewhere that has no brush. I either want like a yard, a lawn, <laughs> <laughs> or, or maybe some big timber with not a single piece of brush under it. plan worked, but time was working against us. At last light, we found the elk, but they were pushing over the next ridge. We're going to leave them alone and plan to return to this area tomorrow. What? Sounds like a good satellite. Oh, my God. 
Pulling that spike in may have been good for morale, but that's just not what we're looking for. With the herd bull still in play, we're going to get aggressive in hopes we can pull him away from his cows. With the herd moving by my location, I feel like I'm too exposed to get away with calling. So I hand signal to Charlie to beagle in the hopes that the bull will turn and come the 20 to 30 yards we need in our direction. It's the last day of our hunt here in Oregon. I'm pushing ahead solo, chasing a bugle with the hopes of notching this tag. When we arrived, the bull was already bugling on his own. So I decided to drop my pack and methodically pick my way through the timber towards his location. I was being very cautious not to bump any cows or satellite bulls along the way. It was a great stock. We didn't blow nothing out, just no bull. I could hear him walking in the grass. The wind was getting a little swirly, so I'm like, I either gotta do something now or get busted anyways. That cow had got up at 80 yards, did just a little bugle with, out of tube, and he ripped back, and I could hear him breaking brush coming right towards us, and then he veered a little bit right, and I never did pick him up. Just walked away from his cows. I don't get it. That's a wrap here in Oregon. I've always said I come out here uh, with a specific way I want to hunt these elk and I want to get them to react and I, you almost try to force that. It hey, is what it is. To chase some great bulls um, the rest of the week. I'm going to regroup and lick my wounds and uh, 
you, know, you go into these hunts um, knowing that if you do pass something like that, there's a real likelihood you might not notch your tag. And uh, that's what happened here.